I'm here in Amritsar in Punjab in India to talk to you about big data and give you an introduction into this idea of big data. There's always been data ever since there was computers. It's the numbers, the bits and bytes. We've talked about this before. The bits of information that the, that the um, computer collects and processes, that's data. But we've recently coined the term big data because data itself has gotten enormous and pretty much out of control. There's so much data coming in from so many different places that it's, um, it's almost impossible to keep track of it all. And so what I want to do is I want to introduce you to this topic of big data before we drill down into the kinds of big data that are most, are, are most, most interest to us in this class. So first of all, the definition of big data. Big data is the enormous and increasing amounts of information that are coming in through all sorts of computer systems all over the world. I want to make a differentiation between big data and big information, and this is the way that I want to do it. I'm going to say that big data is what's happening in science and telecommunications and business, a few other fields, but I want to focus in on those. In science, it's the data of experimentation. So uh, astronomers look at the universe and they're scanning the sky you know, once every millisecond for days and days at a time collecting enormous amounts of data. Biologists are collecting all of the sequences of all the DNA of all these different organisms. Um, uh, geologists are, are collecting uh, seismographic information at a, at a huge and steadily increasing rate. These are all kinds of science that, that's being done where the amount of data is just enormous. In telecommunications, I don't think I have to tell you that more people every day are using te telecommunications. That's mobile phones and um, televisions and telephones and anything that uses the mobile communication network. And let's include the internet in that. And what are they using it for? They're using it for richer and richer and richer interactions every day. Now it's not unusual at all for video to be going over this telecommunication network. You can imagine the volume of information there are. That, exabytes of information that's going across this, uh, this global network. And then finally in business. Business is all about transactions. It's all about money passing hands. It's all about products going back and forth between, um, between different organizations and between organizations and consumers. More and more of those transactions being tracked every day and greater and greater detail is being kept of those transactions every day. So in science, the collection of data, of scientific data, in telecommunications, the transmission of, of communication and richer and richer communication. And finally in business, transactions that are getting more and more frequent and also more and more detailed. That's the idea of big data. Huge amounts of information. And how do we deal with that information? So how do we deal with it? That's the layman's way of thinking about it. When somebody says big data, you should think, how do we deal with all of this stuff coming in? I want to break it down a little bit further and talk to you about some of the, about, about when we say deal with it, what exactly do we mean? So I want to start with the idea of acquiring the information. It has to be gotten. So in a scientific experiment, for example, there may be um, a radio telescope scanning across the sky going, Scan, 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 scan until the entire sky is, um, is mapped at, the, at radio frequencies. So that's acquiring the data. That's getting it from the physical world into the data form. That's the first part of big data. How do I get that much data to, to be sourced, to be created in the amount of time I have to create it? If I want to scan the entire sky, and maybe I want to scan the entire sky every three seconds, you can imagine I have to go bang, 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 all the way across the sky, getting all this data. That's acquisition, moving the, inf moving the data from the world where it's outside the computer to the world where it's inside the computer. Having acquired it from, from for example, a photograph, maybe I have a photograph of the sky at the radio frequencies, um, I have to then store it. I have to put it somewhere. It has to be put on some hard drive in some, some storage media. So that's the second big aspect. The first big aspect of big data is just being able to acquire it at the rate we need to acquire it at. The second is to be able to store that enormous amount of information where? Basically, it's on hard drives these days. Those are the, that's the major place where information is being stored. Larger and larger, bigger and bigger arrays of hard drives. So acquiring, storing, organizing that information. It's not enough just to dump it all onto a hard drive. Somehow it has to be organized. It has to be categorized. It has to be cataloged. It has to be put in some sort of order so that sense can be made of it later. So I have to acquire it, I have to store it, and then I have to organize it. After I've organized it, I have to retrieve it. And of course, retrieval is a combination of the storage device where it's, where it's held and the organization on the storage device, which allows you to say, what do I want? And then the retrieval goes to that, hard, that storage place, possibly a hard drive, uses the organization scheme that it has used to store the information as well as what you've said in terms of a query 
to retrieve the information and then brings it back so that it's useful. So I might, for example, I might want some particular quadrant of the sky at some particular time. Obviously, when I acquired the data, I had to somehow stamp it with the time and the quadrant of the sky. So my organizational scheme there is a time-based organization and a, and a location-based organization. I use the time and location-based organization to retrieve the information. And when I retrieve it, I have to put it somewhere. I take it out of the storage and I put it somewhere. So that kind of brings us to the next big idea here. I've retrieved the information. I have to somehow visualize it. I have to say, what do I do with it? In the case of the sky, I might turn the radio signals into dots of light in different colors. And I might produce a map or I might produce a, a time-lapse image of a certain quadrant of the sky that shows the radio frequencies over a certain duration of time. In some way or another, I have to take all of that data, gigabytes and terabytes of data, and combine it all into something that a human being can deal with, like a picture. More often than not, that's what we do with the data, is we create some sort of picture, some kind of, kind of chart, some kind of graph that takes an enormous, enormous, enormous amount of data and crunches it into something that the human eye can parse, that the human eye can understand. So we acquire the information, we store it, we organize it, we retrieve it, we visualize it, we put it into some sort of form, and we analyze it. We run advanced mathematics on it to say what happened. Did, um, uh, did, did a star blow up in that quadrant of the sky during the time that we, that, we, um, that we were watching, or didn't it? That's all done based on very advanced, sophisticated analytics, uh, mathematical formulas that take the data and crunch it down and try to give you some form of conclusion that you can draw. Something blew up in that portion of the sky, something didn't blow up in that portion of the sky based on our analytics. So we acquire it, we store it, we organize it, we retrieve it, we visualize it, and we analyze it. Not always in that, in that exact order, but those are the big steps. Okay, so that tells you what's going on with big data. Those are the issues. How do we do all those things? And believe me, we're far from at the end of having figured any of that out. And if that stuff sounds interesting to you, there's a lifelong career in any of those parts, in, in an analysis and visualization and organization and storage and retrieval and an acquisition of data. All that's there. All right, so that's the world of big data huge amounts of data being sourced from the world somehow um, and then made use of, stored, organized, and made use of through visualization and analysis. And now let me move on to big information. If you remember, I've, I've drawn this distinction, a somewhat artificial distinction, but a really useful one for us between the concept of data and the concept of information. Data is those numbers that we can process somehow. When we do a data analysis, we're running equations, mathematics on all of that data to try and make some sense out of it. Information, I said, is the stuff we want to consume. It's the videos and the books and the web pages and the music and the, audio and the other kinds of sound and the animation and the images, all the stuff that we in our daily lives consume, ingest. Right? So that's big as well, and you'll see in the following topics, and, and it's the kind of stuff that we're actually going to focus on during this course, and you'll see a lot more information about the big data and big information in the world coming up. Um, but you can imagine there's a lot of that too, and just look at something like YouTube, for example, where this video is playing. YouTube has an enormous amount of video, but we don't really run visualizations and analytics on the video, or at least not, not directly. What we really want to do is we want to present the, the video. So all of the things that we do, acquiring it, storing it, organizing it, retrieving it, um, uh, at, uh, retrieving it, uh, visualizing it, and analyzing it, those all happen. The visualization, however, and, and analysis don't happen nearly as much. They're not as big a focus. And in the place of visualization and analysis, really we have the presentation. How is the information presented? How is it framed? How do we show it to people? What kind of controls do we give them? And if you look at YouTube, that's a perfect example. Billions and billions of videos, and how are they presented? How do you see one from the other? How do we target those different pieces of information? A key issue, because each piece of information might want to be consumed by a certain person under a certain set of circumstances. So I have to figure out ways of targeting it, figuring out under what circumstance, what kind of person wants what piece of information and making sure they get it, I get it to them. And finally, being able to navigate. Right, when in, in, a, in a visualization of the sky, the navigation isn't really so important. But on YouTube, navigation is critical. How do I get you from one video to another? How do I show you all the videos that you might be interested in? How do I organize those videos on the screen and allow you to navigate from one to the other? Okay, so we have big data. That's the big concept. Inside big data, 
is big information. Big information like all the books of the world. You'll see a topic coming up on Google, on Google, uh, Google Books. Um, all of the uh, videos of the world, all of that stuff, that's big information. And in addition to the storage and retrieval and organization, we also have the presentation, the targeting, and the navigation of that information.